Thank you very much. My name is Jerome Adams. I'm the Indiana State Health Commissioner. I'm a physician anesthesiologist, and I'm the brother of an addict. On behalf of Governor Mike Pence and the people of Indiana, it's my honor to be here today. In rural Scott County, we're dealing with the largest injection drug use related HIV outbreak in decades with what CDC Director Tom Frieden described as a higher incidence of HIV than any country in Sub-Saharan Africa. In an area that had three total cases of HIV over the prior four years, we as of today have 160 positives with 95% related to injection drug use and a hepatitis C co-infection rate of 88%. At the root of this outbreak is our country's prescription opioid crisis. The crisis is multifactorial, but I think it's helpful to separate it into three distinct problem and solution areas. Number one, we need to stop the flow of opioids into communities. Number two, we need to deal with the personal and public health consequences of communities with overflow of both opioids and people engaging in high-risk activities. And number three, we need to create an outlet for those seeking recovery from substance use disorder. In terms of stopping the flow, in Indiana, we witnessed a 10% decrease in prescriptions since we implemented new opioid prescribing rules in 2012, but we still have work to do. We need an aggressive education and prevention strategy starting in childhood. In addition to promoting the dangers of prescription drug misuse, we need better prescription drug monitoring programs with required reporting from the VA and federal methadone treatment centers, higher thresholds for new FDA approvals of opioids, and safety and efficacy reviews of previously approved opioids based on recent data. Policies should further promote pharmacy and community opioid take-back programs and require opioid manufacturers to facilitate these endeavors. And we should revisit both pain as the fifth vital sign and the pain component of patient satisfaction as a consideration for physician and hospital reimbursement. Our focus needs to be on functionality and outcomes and not simply on stopping pain with pills. Regarding the consequences of opioid overflow, we've seen not just an HIV epidemic, but also regional epidemics of hepatitis, overdose deaths, unsustainable levels of incarceration, and community hopelessness. Our comprehensive approach in Scott County includes increased HIV and hepatitis testing and immediate treatment referral, locally based harm reduction strategies, immunizations, healthcare coverage, job training, and an outreach campaign targeting drug users and those involved in the commercial sex trade. On a state level, we formed a neonatal abstinence syndrome committee and recently made naloxone available for first responders and friends or family members of those at risk. As Governor Pence said when he signed our naloxone bill, bills like this are about saving lives. Thanks to Governor Pence fighting hard to receive the only federal waiver of its kind and to Representative Pallone's point, we can further address the needs of those with substance use disorder, including health care coverage and access, the two are not equal, and job training via our Healthy Indiana plan. If people don't have hope, they will increasingly turn to and stay on drugs, a painful lesson we've learned from Scott County. Fortunately, over 225,000 Hoosiers have more hope now thanks to HIP 2.0. Lastly, in terms of creating an outlet, we must provide options for those seeking recovery services. A national campaign could reduce the stigma of substance use disorder and HIV so people aren't ashamed to seek services and could help reframe addiction from that of a moral failure to that of a medical disorder that requires a lifetime of attention. Lack of recovery reflects a lack of enlightenment on society's part as much as it reflects a lack of earnestness on the sufferer's part. Regarding recovery in Scott County, we found a severe and unmet need for access to appropriate substance use disorder treatment, and we've accordingly worked to increase beds and outpatient services. When incarcerated, sufferers also should have access to mental health and addiction treatment with linkages to these services upon release. Such programs exist in Indiana, but are often only found in the most well-resourced communities. And we must educate communities and the public about medication-assisted treatment as an important component of the recovery safety net. Recently enacted legislation in Indiana allows the establishment of additional methadone clinics in our state, and the criminal justice system at the county level is increasingly offering Vivitrol for inmates upon release or as an option during drug court diversion programs. Our situation in Indiana, in closing, may be unprecedented in many ways, but in many others, it illustrates problems faced throughout our country. There's much we do, but I am confident that we can succeed if we focus on education, patient-centered care, and community and patient empowerment. I am confident we can successfully combat the scourge of opioid abuse. Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time, and I look forward to the opportunity to answer your questions.